Well, there are two types of sedimentary rocks. One type is rocks that are made up of grains of other rocks. Those are clastic sedimentary rocks. But there's an entire other family that has many different kinds of rocks in it called chemical and biological sedimentary rocks. And we'll talk a little bit about those. Chemical sedimentary rocks form when minerals precipitate from seawater or, or an ocean and they precipitate some mineral. The number one most abundant mineral is called calcite. Calcite is calcium carbonate. This is a mineral that contains calcium carbonate. That carbonate mineral is the primary constituent of rocks which are made up of calcite. And those are called the carbonate rocks. The most abundant of these is called limestone. And limestone is very common. We see it in your driveway or, or out by your house. It's forming in the ocean today. You get coral reefs, things like that, where organisms are actually taking the calcium and carbon and oxygen out of the seawater and forming their own hard shells. And sometimes these shells will stick together and make brand new carbonate rocks. And all of those are in that family of calcite-based uh, rocks. Limestone, and the second most common one being dolomite. And dolomite is like limestone, except it's hard, it's brittle, it has magnesium in it. And magnesium actually is a pretty common thing even in some of the food that you eat. Buckwheat flour, oat bran, almonds, just a few of the types of food that you eat that's high in magnesium. We can create our own chemical sedimentary rocks, our own carbonates, just like chemical precipitation occurs in a cave deep underground. You may have gone on vacation and gone into a cave and seen stalactites which are forming on the roof of the cave or stalagmites which are growing from the floor. As water drips down it leaves a little bit of calcite each time. You can do that here in your own kitchen with a couple of jars and a piece of string. Here you can see where the calcite has grown off of the string and grown all the way down to where it touches the red plate. This is over a matter of about two days. One thing about carbonate minerals is that they contain calcite which is reactive to acids. Carbonates are typically the rocks that host caves because they dissolve when weak acids are created through rainwater and they dissolve out part of, of the carbonate rock. We can do that here in our kitchen if we take one of the most common forms of carbonate that you have in your kitchen which is the common antacid. You take these when your tummy aches. You can put these in a glass of vinegar which is a weak acid and after a few seconds it will start to dissolve. The acid will basically tear apart the calcite crystal and it will dissolve and become part of the solution with the vinegar. We also can look at certain minerals that are made up of things like halite which form in what's called evaporite minerals. These minerals form in dry lakes or oceans as they dry up we saturate the water with the mineral and it starts to precipitate crystals out of the water. And it leaves behind a type of sedimentary rock called rock salt. Rock salt we use in food, we use in the making of ice cream and all sorts of different things. You can also get rocks made out of other evaporite minerals like gypsum. We also have biological rocks such as coals. And coals are included with sedimentary rocks because they, they do come from organic material and they're made up of carbon. We take many, many layers of organic material and compact it and we get a peat and as we bury peat in the ground, over time it compacts and hardens and becomes more dense and becomes ultimately bituminous coal, which is a medium grade of coal, and then eventually anthracite coal, which is a high grade of coal, which we burn. It's very flammable. I could put this on here and it would make a lot of smoke because there's a lot of energy in coal because the carbon bonds in there store a lot of energy. Once I cook this up, it would uh, burn fairly readily a little higher temperature. I don't want to do that in my kitchen because I'll have black smoke everywhere. The last sedimentary rock that's formed through chemical means is chert. And chert is basically silica or quartz. It's the same stuff that comes in beach sand except it forms sometimes in the deep oceans where it can form in places where we have hot water. Chert forms nodules. It likes to clump together. And that's one reason why, believe it or not, some people put it in food. If you go to get beef jerky at the store, sometimes you'll find these little packets. 
and they say silica gel. This is amorphous silica. They put this stuff in meat because it's an anti-caking agent or an anti-clumping agent. It's a, a preservative. Well, in rocks, cherts sometimes form nodules. Basically, uh, you find these nodules of silica, and the Native Americans of old would take those, and they would ch make flint or chert arrowheads out of those. So obviously important to kitchens many hundreds of years ago, not just important to this one today.